you go ahead and start with the word prayer. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, maker of all things that are seen and unseen, to you belongs all praise, glory, and honor. Help us to look into your word and to understand it, O Lord. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible is the word of God, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in right living, righteousness. And now we're still, we're continuing on with the same thesis found in Psalm 101, verse 6. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. So remember how we have been, this has been, the study of Leviticus is to the priests. So this is talking to the people of the land. The faithful of the land. So a lot of the things that were being applied to them don't apply to us anymore such as taking your son and stoning him for being rebellious we don't do that no more you could get in trouble for that um, but the principles and the precepts are still there and now uh, he that walketh in a perfect way he shall serve me so because he was talking to the priest he said, you're still going to have to meet a qualification. You still need to walk in a certain way. Because once you become a Christian, everybody's a priest. But just because you're a priest doesn't mean you're going to have the capacity to minister in that, I mean, minister in that capacity. Because, and that's what we left off. Because there's some things that are, there's blemishes. The Bible calls them blemishes in the Old Testament. If you had these you're not going to be able to serve in the ministry because look what that in verse 16 of uh, chapter 21 and the lord spake unto moses saying speak unto aaron saying whosoever be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish let him not approach to offer the bread of his god so we saw how the priests they're the only ones that could offer them the, the sacrifices that's why Saul got in trouble. He decided to do it himself. Remember, Samuel told him, wait for me. And he went ahead and did it. You're not supposed to. These were the only people that were allowed, the Levites. And they were the only ones that could offer the bread. And they're the only ones that could partake of the holy things. He says, whosoever be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach. They could not approach the altar or approach unto God we're being told here any blemish and then he's going to get into the blemishes what they are any flaw he says let him not approach which this is I was talking to somebody just recently I says you know the, the New Testament is is heavy it's really heavy and a lot of times we think we understand it but it's so deep the New Testament is so deep like if, especially the book of Ephesians the, new, the Old Testament is full of pictures. You know, a, a, a child, you can show him a picture book and he, ex, he can understand better. And I think that's what the Lord's done with the book of Leviticus. People think it's difficult, but it's really, it's a picture book. It's full of pictures so that we can understand. And through these pictures, we see how good God is. He is a good God. God is good. He's just really good. God is good. Um, Look what he says here. For whatsoever, for whatsoever man be he that has a blemish, he that he shall not approach, a blind man or a lame, or he that has a flat nose. That just makes cracks me up every time I read that. Or anything superfluous, or a man that is a broken footed, or broken handed, or a crooked backed, or a dwarf. I thought, really, Lord? Is there dwarfs in the ministry? He says, yeah, evidently, because he says, don't, if you're a dwarf, don't. You could be a priest and be a dwarf, isn't it something? Or that has a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scab, or has broken stones. Okay, so look at this. We, here's, here, here's where we stop. He shall not approach. If you have any of these things, and by the way, these things, you could inherit these things from your family, you know? Um, 
So let's go on. So these, what, what is that? So some of these things, I got some uh, from uh, uh, um, commentators, but others, I don't know what they are because they didn't mention what they were. A blind man, what's a blind man? What's a, what's a problem? He says, if, I, if you're blind, you can't serve. But to us, to apply to us, a blind man is, is anybody that can't see the things of God. How can you teach or serve as a priest if you, don't, if you can't see the things of God? You know, I mean, if you take a country ride, uh, you can see God all over the place in the butterflies and the trees and the grass. And I mean, and even in the city, you can see God everywhere. Uh, but if you can't see the things of God, or if you're lame, lame could be somebody that has a poor walk. You know, you don't walk straight. You got a limp or something. And so that's, that was Jacob. Jacob had a limp. But that could be, so that's a poor witness. You don't have a good walk. Or he that has a flat nose, and I thought that was, what is a nose used for? And I think nose, normally when you walk into a room, what is that smell? You're trying to discern. And I think what the Lord is saying, if you don't have a discerning heart, if you can't discern, and there's people like that. How did you get into that thing? Didn't you see the signs? Uh, no, okay. No discernment or anything superfluous or a man that's broken footed or broken handed. And I think that's got to do with uh, works. And some people think that works, that's how you please God with works. And that's not, that's not how you please God. It's not your works. It rather by being, you gotta be, and then the works flow naturally. But uh, uh, um, at, I think that's a wrong view of works because I've run across people that don't tithe, but then they say, I says, what do you mean you don't tithe? This? No, I always just go buy and mow the grass or something. I says, that's not tithing, that's mowing the grass. So some people have the wrong view of, of works and or a crooked back. That's a hunchback. And that could be your twisted. You could have a wrong, distorted view of the Christian life. And there's people like that. There's Christians there's, um, that have a twisted view. Of the, you know, you can run across them. I says, you think that? Yeah, there's people like that. Or a dwarf. And Paul says that there's wars. Because Paul says there's people that are not mature. This is talking about being mature. Paul says you ought to be now teaching and yet you have need that somebody feeds you milk. You know, so that's a dwarf. Or what about this, a blemish in his eye? And the Lord talks about that in Matthew. He says you want to take the, the splinter off of somebody's eye and yet you have a beam in your eye? You know, it's funny, that's funny too. Or scurvy, being scurvy or scab. I think that's being judgmental, having a blemish in his eye, or having scurvy or being scurvy or scab. I think that's something that won't heal. Um, and that could be something that's unforgiving. You're unforgiving. And that could be uh, the thing here, why God says you can't serve. If you have an unforgiving heart, that's going to hold you back. This is what he's getting at. He's, uh, this is going to hold you back in, in the ministry. <clears throat> because he's talking to the priest. And then he says, having his stones broken. Now that is just simply having an unhealthy sex life. That, that'll disqualify you right off the bat. In the Old Testament, these blemishes kept you from serving. And they do in the, in the New Testament as well. We just saw, we just went through what, how they apply to us. But they don't need to. Some of these things in the Old Testament, you, they couldn't be healed, but God could heal anything. I mean, God could heal a blind man. We know that God could do that. And in the New Testament, we're told this. Uh, well, this is in the Old Testament, Psalm 103, verse 2. May, uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So he forgiveth all thy iniquities, and healeth all thy diseases. So in, through miracles, God could heal all these things in a hunchback, a blind man, and so on. He could heal all those. But in the New Testament, we're, again, all these things can be healed. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, because we're all, we're all priests, we could all be serving. 
It doesn't mean you know everything, but there could be an area where you're, you're gone through that you're, you're pretty good at, whether it be uh, uh, administration or, or, or whatever. You know, you could have, have a gift for that and you, you've gone to, uh, um, to the point where you, perfect, you perfected it and you could be useful in that particular area. Now, no man that has a blemish of the seed of Aaron, uh, uh, no man that has a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He has a blemish. He shall not come nigh to, the, to offer the bread of his God. And notice he's telling us, you don't do that. You can't do that because you got a problem. You got a blemish. And so, this is very visual in the old testament you could see this thing but in the new testament we're being told you won't be able as well you're, you're gonna you're gonna be kept away look uh no man that has a blemish he shall not come nigh to to offer the bread of god but look what it says here but he shall eat the bread of his god see because you're a christian that you, you that won't be kept away from you that's your right you can't eat the bread because you're, you're a Christian. You're saved. Just because, although you can't serve as a priest, you can still partake of the, of the food. And that's what we do when we do the Lord's Supper. I mean, we come in here and Brother Best tells us, you need, we, have, we go into a quiet time where we can uh, ask for forgiveness for sins that we've had so we can partake of the bread. It's all right. But if you're not a Christian, you're told. If you're not a Christian, don't partake. This is not for you, okay? And, and he's gonna cover that as well here. Only he shall not go into the veil. Now this is really fantastic. Nor come nigh unto the altar because he has a blemish. That he profane not my sanctuaries. For I the Lord do sanctify them. I the Lord do sanctify them. Now look what he's saying here. You, he shall not be able to go into the veil. You're going to be held back. Because you can only go so far. If this is the soul and the holy place, that's the way I look at it. The soul, was, the soul is the holy place. And the holy of holies is the spirit. That's what God is the spirit. And he dwells. He's the spirit. That means if you have a blemish, you're that can keep you away from spiritual things and you won't you're being stopped you're, it's being separated from things that belong to you but you can't because you got a blemish and so what the lord is saying is you can take care of this thing otherwise you're going to be held back you can only go so far and that means that it's, there's a lot of things you know like physicists i mean people like steven weinberger of ut austin or uh, or Richard Dawkins or, or uh, Carl Sagan. These people that were physicists, they thought they understood the whole thing. And yet, the simplest thing that a child of God can understand, like for example, the atom, what holds it together? These people don't understand what holds it together, and yet we do. We do, we Christians. I'm no physicist, and I can tell them, I know what holds that, the nuclear, uh, uh, negative charges and the positive charges they say well, what is that thing they study it but i says i know what it is the lord tells us upholding all things by the word of his power that's what it is and it's invisible to them they can't see it god says that you'll be held back if you have a blemish you'll be held back from these things understanding spiritual things because he has a blemish and then some, the Lord makes it so simple. It says, what he's saying here is, is you, you, and, and the Bible says, Israel limited the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel. He was limited because there's, our lifestyle can limit God. There's not much he can do. If we live in a, a, a corrupt lifestyle, God says, you're going to be held back. And I, it seems to me like here, he's telling us, this is going to be a problem. You need to take care of it. If you want to go on and experience some of the fuller things we got. Because he has a blemish. Therefore, there's going to be a separation. That's what, that's what that veil was there. Now, with Christ, the veil has been taken away. 
but I still believe that still applies. If you start living, if you, if you develop a blemish, like we, like we said, if you have an unforgiving heart, you're going to be stuck. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. Now, this is to the... Now, remember, we have looked at that uh, uh, before, and what that says there, for I, do, the Lord, do sanctify them. To them, that was a little scarier. And it can apply in ways to us, because the Lord says, He will take you home. And I believe He still does that. If you persist in a lifestyle that... If some becoming a, a Christian, God will take you home before. There is a sin unto death. The Bible tells us that. But here in the Old Testament, look what it says. I do sanctify them. And, and Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons and all the children of Israel. This was very special to them. It says, they're being told. They're being warned. You just can't go willy-nilly into the holy place. And I, when I would teach the children, the tabernacle, I would tell them, if you're playing football and your football all of a sudden landed inside the, the court, you just, go, you just don't go running in there to get your football back. You have to ask a Levite, can I get my ball from in there? Because it was a scary thing. And they knew this. Look at this. It, that was, this was Nadab and Abihu experienced that. Ananias and Sapphira experienced that. And we know that Uzzah experienced that as well. These, we said just all they did was just touch it, touch the ark and zap, he was dead. God says, I need you to know this. Sanctify the Lord, because I will sanctify you, and that man, he'll take you home. That was the meaning for them. And it was a scary thing. And so this thing, look at this, separate, separate tricks, something that divides or separates as the line between light and dark areas on a partially illuminated surface. So this is the thing that God says, I'm going to separate you, because you can't. It's for your own good. That's, this is really for your own good. God says, and you know what, folks? I was, I, I was listening to this uh, YouTube uh, thing. He was talking about welding. And he says, if you stare at the, at the weld, he says, you could go blind. It's just pure light. You know, it, it, it can blind you. And so the Lord is telling us, God is a consuming fire. And that's what happened to Nadab and Abihu. They went in to, into a place where they were told. They were told not to do it. And they, they were careless. And so there, here's an example. I think when we get to heaven, I'm going to talk to them. What were you guys thinking? They said, we thought God was good. Well, he is good, but he's warning you. He's a consuming fire. If any, now, 1 Peter 4, 11, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God and all things be glorified through Christ, Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So here I'm switching the thesis because we're now going into another chapter. Um, this is not a sermon. So see, so we can switch theses in the middle of the lesson because we're just going through. So the new thesis is this, that God, that in all things God be glorified. So now you can move into chapter 22. Chapter 21 was, was telling us that you can have a blemish, but it continues here because he's talking to the priest. We're nearing the end of Le Leviticus. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, that the sep that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hallow unto me, I am the Lord. You need to take him seriously. So he says this, again talking to the priest, separate yourselves from the holy things, <clears throat> the things of God, profane not my name. You need to... Uh, have him in high regard. All the things that were brought to God, those are holy things. Uh, which reminds us the things that, that are in this church, that once they've been given to, to the church, they belong to God. Uh, and we need, we need to have a respect for this place because God looks good as the place looks good. He looks good. So there, there's a, those things were separate. They're separate. The things that belong to God, they're his. And he says, and if you're going to be ministering in the things of God, you yourself need to be holy. This is the, this is the thesis of the whole book Leviticus. Be holy for I am holy. 
So once you're, you're dealing or touching or handling the things of God, because look what he says. Um, Say unto them, Whosoever be of, the, of your seed among your generations goeth into the holy things which the children of, of Israel hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. And you know, we already covered all the things that could make you unclean. If you touch a worm, if you touch a dead possum or something, you're unclean. That's why he gave us all the, don't touch those things. They'll make you unclean. If you, and then you go in there and serve. you like on the way to the tabernacle, you happen to touch a dead mouse or something. You find a dead mouse in a jar or something and you pull it out, out of the tail. Zap, you're unclean. And you won't go walking in here. God says, don't do that. Because he's warning us. He's telling them, look, you, you, all of a sudden you're unclean. Having his uncleanness upon him, he shall be cut off. The Lord says, you cannot. This is how serious it was for them. And it shows us how serious it is with us as well. Because people are dying all around us. It's a very serious. We're going to heaven, folks. I dream of the day I'm going to be in heaven. What is it going to be like? I, haven't, I can't even imagine. It's going to be fantastic. And there's nothing like it here on earth. It's going to be so awesome to be in heaven. So I kind of just ignore the people around me. Oh, well, you know, I don't know where you're going. I'm going to heaven. God says, don't act like that. They're, going, they're dying. A lot of people are dying and going to hell. So we need to be aware how serious this thing is because they're watching us. They're looking at us. It's a sacred thing. You, know, you yourself need to look at it as sacred. Um, look what he took. Those things belong to God. In Matthew 5, 24, we're told that if you brought a gift to God, it belongs to Him. You just can't be taken aback. And I've heard people do that. They want to sue the church, or they get mad, and they say, well, this is mine, I'm taking that. I wouldn't do that. Whatever you gave to God, it's His. You know, whatever you gave to the church, uh, it's His. You know, you can't be taken aback. Look what it says here. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, then come and offer thy gift. So all these rules he was given to them. Whatsoever man of the seed of Aaron is a leper, or hath a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he be clean, and whosoever touches anything that is unclean by a dead man or a man whose seed goeth from him. It says you could be a leper. And what that means, you could be a sinner. I mean, you could be a... And there's Christians that are living unholy lives, lifestyles that they are crazy. I mean, what, haven't you read the Bible? Maybe they haven't, and that's why they're doing that, but it's a dangerous thing. But here you could be a leper by having a running issue, something that just continually is coming out of you. Out of the heart of man comes all the sinful things. Out of the, it's not what goes in, but come, what comes out that defiles a man. So a running issue, anything that's the people, you might not see it, but other people see it. And, whoso, and whosoever touches, a, a, says, you shall not eat. Notice, uh, you're unclean. Although it belongs to you, the food, because you're a priest, he says, you won't receive the benefit of it. The things of God. And that's why when people come and, and Brother Bess preaches a fantastic sermon, and we miss it. Well, what was that? I didn't get anything. Oh, don't blame the pastor. Or don't blame the word of God. Something was wrong somewhere, you know, and you didn't pick it up because you can't eat it. You know, that's what it's saying here. Uh, until he be clean. Once you're clean, you'll be amazed how your ears will perk up and you start hearing things. Um, because look, if you were a leper, a leper had to go around saying, unclean, unclean, unclean to let people know that you were contagious. But people don't do that nowadays, you know, going around and they're unclean, but, they, but you can see it. You can see it. When people are unclean, oh, I can, they might not see it, but you can say you know, what they're doing is wrong. And so they're unclean. So they're actually, they're actually saying it by just living their lifestyle. They're saying it. And they can be they can be seen 
So this is what the, I believe the Lord is saying here. You can't be seen um, being a leper to be made known to others. Now, uh, and you're unclean. This makes you unclean. Now, there's a, there's a phrase that keeps occurring in the Bible, and, I, and I, I covered it several times, and I never, and I didn't cover it properly. Now, I think I'm going to go back to it and, and show you this. Um, whosoever touches any creeping thing, there it is, whether it be, whether by he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, whatsoever uncleanness he hath, you could be a leper or you could be unclean, made unclean by anything, like I said, a mouse. You know, you, can, you touch an unclean thing and that thing, uh, and what it is, these little critters, they all have, their, remember when we looked at all these animals? They have unique uh, um, uh, attributes to these little critters. A mouse, especially a mouse, you don't see it in the daytime, they're kind of going around, sneaking around. You know, that's the only way, all of a sudden out of the corner of your eyes, what was that? It moved on the corner, what was that? Same thing with roaches, they stay away from light. And so they can make you unclean because you can become like that, sneaky. And that's trying to avoid being unnoticed, but you are noticed, you, you, you're seen, you, you, you are unclean. So this, this phrase here, until even, this is the phrase I wanted to show you here. And I might be off, like I said, um, but look at this, folks. I need to go back and show you the Hebrew day. The Hebrew day consisted of the evening and the morning were the first day. This is found throughout Genesis. This is the day. It starts with the evening. The evening starts, that, not like us. Our day starts at midnight or 1201. That's when our day starts. But with the Jewish, it starts in the evening at 6 o'clock. You have the first watch, you have the second watch, you have the third watch, you have the fourth watch, and then comes the morning. The sun comes up. That's the morning. Half the day is already gone when the morning starts for them. And so by the, by the time, uh, seven o'clock comes around, that's the first hour, second, uh, eight o'clock is the second hour, and the third hour is when the nine, nine o'clock is the third hour. That's when they crucified the Lord. And then he was, um, and then at, at noon, which is the sixth hour, he was already there for three hours crucified. That's noon. And then by three o'clock or the ninth hour, that's when he died. So he was on the cross for six hours. But that's in the, that's in the light. But I, I needed to show you this because you can only see things in the light. Right? So you're being, if you're a leper, you can be seen the other time in the dark you can't be seen but you can be seen in the light so then comes the next day okay that, and that's the even which the bible recall, recall but that's the evening so i wanted to show you this because of what it says here and i think this is fantastic look at this the soul which touches any such shall be unclean until even and shall not eat of the holy things unless he wash his flesh with water. And I kept going back over this. I said, what does this mean? He, okay, until the even. That means he was unclean throughout the day until the even. So the Lord says, you're going to be unclean. If you touch a mouse, you're going to be unclean for the whole day. You're unclean until the even when the sun goes down and there's no light, you can no longer be seen, then you'll be clean. I thought, that's weird. You know, that's, but well, that's, I think that's the way I understand it. That's why I had to show you that. Now, until, and then you're not seen anymore, so you're okay. Or, or he says, yes, sir. That, yes, yeah, that's very good. That could very well be. Um, now, I, that's very good. Now, this, this, now look at this. It says, unless he washes flesh with water. Okay, you could wait until the even, 
when the sun goes down and then me being clean. Or you can make yourself clean earlier by going to the Word of God because you could wash and that was the labor that was in front or uh, that's the way I take it because the, the Levites could wash themselves there. You could wash there and the labor is the Word of God. That's the labor, the, 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 which was consisted of two pieces, the rest and the labor and the water. Okay, you could make, get clean one of two ways. Wait until the even, and that could be by the, by the sacrifice, and that very, very well could be, brother. That's very good insight. Or until, un unless he washes his, his, his flesh with water. But then look at the, what it says here. And when the sun is down, he shall be clean. And shall afterward eat of the holy things. Isn't that fantastic? God says, because he's, he's, it's his food. You know, once you become a Christian, the Bible is your food. It belongs to you. No, but a stranger can't eat it. They don't understand it. But we can. The, the Bible belongs to us Christians. And we are supposed to feed off of that because that's our right as a, Christ, as a Christian, as a Levite. And that's what I get from this. I said, this is amazing. Be, because look at this verse. I said, because it's his food. It's your food. It's your right. And look at this. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Isn't that fantastic? God says, this is yours. Like my mom says, you want to eat? And I was holding a school. I was uh, uh, maybe misbehaving, and I was, I'm, I'm going to show my mom, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to go to my room, and I'm not going to eat. My mom said, okay. And then as I was walking out, stomping out of the kitchen, she would say, when you get hungry, it'll be in the refrigerator. And then sure enough, later on, I said, I'm hungry. Oh, the plate's there. That's how good God is. That's how good, he cannot deny himself. I love it. Um, that which dieth of itself or is torn with beasts, he shall not eat to defile himself therewith. I am the Lord. Now look at this. Anything that dieth of itself or is torn of beasts. And remember, we covered the blood. What's going to happen if, if, if you find a dead rabbit out in a, in a field, it says, oh, look, lunch. Not really. It died of itself. You, you don't know how it died or got tore by an animal or a dog or something. God says, you don't eat it. Why not? Because you didn't sacrifice it. It's dead. The blood is probably still in it and it's dried. And God says, remember what God says, anytime an animal is killed, I need to see the blood. No blood seen. He needs to see the blood. And this is, and of course, you talk to people all the time, and this is one of the things. They don't include the blood. God is, to God, the blood is very important. It's the life of Jesus Christ. It's got to be seen. If there's, if there's no sacrifice, look what he says. They shall therefore keep my ordinances, lest they bear sin for it and die. Therefore. And, and die therefore, if they profane it. You can't do that. This body, the priest, the Levite's body belonged to the Lord. He says, you're going to profane it by taking, partaking of something that's, you didn't offer it to God. It's the sacrifice has got to be offered to God. It's his. I, the Lord, do sanctify them. Again, he injects that there. He says, I will kill you. I will make you whole. I will make you clean. Okay, uh, let's just cover, and the, look at this. And David said this concerning this thing. If you want to offer God a sacrifice and you don't want to pay for it, and that's what that would be. God says, I need to see the sacrifice. And the king said unto Aruna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Aruna wanted to give David the hill and the field uh, for David to, con uh, to uh, uh, erect uh, an altar. He wanted to give it to him. You can have it, sir. You can have the animals, the hill, the whole thing. And David says, No. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the, my, the Lord my God of that which doth not, of that, that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. 
And that ought to tell, and again, I run across people that don't believe in tithing. And I says, God says this on the, in the Bible in so many ways. He says, you can't, he needs, especially David says, it needs to cost me something. If, if you're not offering any sacrifice unto God, it's pretty much meaningless what he's saying. I want, you to, I, want, I want it to be a sacrifice. That which does cost me nothing. You cannot offer God those things. And uh, I think that's why it's very difficult sometimes to pray later, not when you're sleepy. This is, oh Lord, I'll pray later because I'm really sleepy. And the Lord's probably saying, well, that's the point. It should cost you something. It should cost you some sleep. Oh yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's go. Therefore, okay, we'll close here. And there shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner of the, pre of the priest or a hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. Here you are. Not, every, not everybody can partake of that which, is, which belongs to us. The holy things of God belongs to us. A stranger or a sojourner, they cannot. The only one that says, but if a priest buy any soul with his money, if it's redemption, if he's redeemed, he shall eat of it. And he that is born in his house shall eat of his meat. So th that's the only way you can partake. If, if the bread is yours, and the Lord is saying, you're a priest, take care of the blemish, and the food is always, you're always going to have food, and you're gonna be, there's going to be times of uncleanness, you can take care of it, or otherwise the Lord will take care of it. Or, or even more, he'll take you home if you persist. So we'll stop there. But th the book of Leviticus is awesome, fantastic, folks. And I can hardly wait to get into Luke. Because I think what we were taking from this into Luke is going to be mind-blowing. Let us close with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for being so good to us. And thank you for your book. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For beside you there is another God. Amen. Good, good.